Hey y'all, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at using SQL Server functions to trim leading zeros off of a string. Now in my line of work, this comes up often in the extraction of SAP data for key fields like material number, customer number, and vendor number, where we have basically long strings of data coming out where there's a small, you know, seven, eight, nine digit number with a bunch of leading zeros that the user don't, don't want to see on the reports. And in this video, I'm going to give you two different ways to take care of this issue. Well, let's get to work. The first thing I want to show you is actually where the problem originates. And this is just one example. Uh, it could be a, many different source systems, but this is particular one is SAP. And I'm actually displaying here a table called MARA, which is the foundational table. It's the enterprise level table for the material master. And in MARA, you can see these material numbers are all, they have a bunch of leading zeros, right? A ton of them. And so although that's the way they're stored in the system, when they're actually output into a report, a data quality report, or some sort of business information report, or over to some data lake, people are not gonna wanna see all those leading zeros. So how do we deal with them? And actually, let me show you what it looks like. Um, if you export this uh, to a text file and import it into SQL, you can see here the different um, leading zeros for all the records. All right, so there's the problem. Now, how do we solve it? Well, let me close this out and walk you through basically the easy one, right? Uh, and this will take care of most of your issues for um, the leading zero. So we're going to simply use a left trim function. Now, <clears throat> I've broken it down on the screen as a as a script so I can step you through it because again, I don't wanna just give you the answer. I want you to understand how to get to the answer uh, because you know the example you're using probably is not gonna be the exact same as what I have here. So what I am saying here is, and the way this works is I say select left trim and then you've got the parentheses and then here's the string, right? So this is the string from SAP. It could be a column name. And then what we want to trim is this zero, is a zero. So anywhere it finds zeros on the left, it's going to trim until it, until it stops finding a zero. So if I run this, let me just do this guy and hit go. Boom, we got it, right? Now, what about if it has a zero on the end? What will it do? So left trim, go, handles it fine. What if there is a character in the middle of a bunch of zeros? What does it do? Well, it's going to go over to this first place where it finds the character, and it's going to leave the rest of the zeros in there because it's trimming leading zeros. You don't want to trim all zeros. There's a different command for that. You can actually use a function called replace, and you can say replace anywhere there's a zero with a blank or something else. Now... What happens if we have a string that has a bunch of zeros, but somehow in the middle of those zeros, there's a space? All right, that's where it gets just a little bit more complicated. So watch this. If our string is zero, zero, space, a bunch of zeros, space, a bunch of zeros in 490, what will the left trim do? Well, if I hit go, it's going to, in essence, move to the very first space and it's going to stop trimming. All right, so how do we deal with that? Well, I had mentioned the replace command, and we're going to use that replace command to get rid of the spaces, and then we're going to use the trim command to get rid of the zeros. So, and I put the syntax here for the replace command or function uh, right here, but it, basically you're going to take a string expression, you're going to look for a pattern, and then you're going to replace it. So if I say replace, and then I use the exact same string, and this is what I'm looking for, which is it's got a, a quote, space, quote. So I'm looking for a space, and then what I want to replace it with is blank. So da da. All right. And so if I run this, that gives me a string that the left trim can handle. 
So when the left trim gets to this guy, it's going to have nothing but zeros. There's no spaces in it, in it anymore, and then it'll trim it correctly. So in the follow or in the last command line, here's the replace statement that was in the line above. But then we've just L trim around that replacement or, or that replace statement and say get rid of the zeros. And if we do that, we get our answer. All right, so that's that's sort of the easy way with left trim. All right, now I want to show you another way to solve this issue and handle this problem because L trim might not work in every instance, and I want you to have another tool in your arsenal to be able to deal with this problem. What I've done is set up a very simple little uh, Transact SQL script here, and we're going to build upon it, right? So we're going to start and just understand it all the way through, right? So I've declared a couple val uh, variables. One is a string. One is a numeric. One's going to have the value of the string we're going to interrogate, which is this material number 49. And then the other is just the length of that material number because we're going to need that length in a subsequent function. All right, and then I just print it out. So if I run this, we get the value printed out to be 49 and the length being 18. Great, let's move on. Now we're going to introduce a new function called pat index. And here's the, I've, I've even uh, just pasted it in here, what the documentation says for pat index. It's going to return the starting position of the first occurrence of a pattern in a specified expression or zero if the pattern is not found on all valid text character data types. All right, so what does that mean and how we're going to use it? Right, so we're going to say set pat index value, right? So I, I basically created another variable to help us understand this. So this is a, a, a numeric variable, a variable called pat index value. So we want to see where when we when we do this pat index, and then we do this guy. What in the world does this mean, right? So this basically with this single quote percent and then this caret zero, it's basically telling it to go through the string and tell us the first place we don't find a zero. So let's do that. And then, you know, we've got the length. So we've got the value, the pat index and the length. So let's run this and take a look at this. All right. So here's the value, right? The string value. Here's the length. That's nothing new. So pat index 17. So it went through and it counted all the way zero, 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 zero. And it got to this guy and says, I got it. The first place that we don't have a zero is at character 17. Now, if I go up here and throw an, you know, some sort of something, anything other than a zero in here and run it, it's going to say, Ooh, guess what? At one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I have the pattern changing, right? Or in other words, I can't, you know, the not zero shows up. It's an A. What if I have a space? Same thing, right? And so even using this particular method, you may end up having to use replace to get rid of those spaces if you really want to trim all the zeros before and after and uh, after spaces. So let's, so let's go back to just our 49. So we've got the value, we've got the length, and we've got the index, the pattern index changing at character 16. Now, if we go to this next one, what are we introducing here, right? So now we're going to introduce one more thing. So we started off with the value, then we got the length, then we found out where does the, where is the, the pattern change, and now we're going to say, okay, we're going to use that information to pull back the what's left, all right? Well, this introduces another transact SQL function called substring. And substring, here you go, the way that it works, it says, okay, what string are we evaluating? Where do you want me to start? And how long do you want me to go? All right, and so what happens here is we say, set the result substring of the value. So remember, the value is this 049. And then comma, I want you to start at uh, 
what was it, 17 for the length of 18. All right, so let's take a look at this and run it. All right, and so it goes through, and it says, here's my value, 00049. Here's the total length of that. Here's the pattern index, and the result, 49. So what it did is it, it basically went through, started at 17, and said, I'll take what's left, and gives us the 49. So there's two different ways to deal with leading zeros. You can use the uh, left trim, or you can use the pat index. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, uh, I'm going to take all of this code and put it on GitHub so that you can play with it. Uh, and that might be helpful to you to, to work through uh, and, and, and better understand. The last thing I want to do is if I can find it here, actually, I'll just go over here and do another one. So if you look at this guy, here's my, my Mara uh, material number with all the leading zeros. If I go in here and let me just pull up the SQL and say, instead of just Mara, I want to see L trim, Mar or Matner, which is the material number, M-A-T-N-R, comma, get rid of the zeros as Matner, no zero, and a comma, and run that. And let's take a look at that. And there you can see, I'll pull this up. You can see the material number with all the leading zeros pulled off using the simple method of L trim. There you have it. That's how you solve the leading zero issues. I hope this video was super helpful to you. And have a great day. And one last thing, God bless.